everyone! Welcome to the A Lifestyle. Today is the 4th of July, which is pretty exciting. We are going to be talking about motherhood and how that relates to 4th of July is it is your son's birthday today. Yes. And he's turning how old? Two. Okay, so what I have here are, let's see what it's called. I have a BuzzFeed article called 29 Truths About Parenthood You Only Learn Once You Have Kids. I don't know if we'll go through all 29, but we'll go through a few of them. And I just want to hear if these are true okay. and like your perspective on it. Oh, okay. The first one is, I wish someone told me that you'll always love your kids, but you won't always like them. <laughs> and I, uh, not being a parent, I feel like this is kind of harsh. Like, yeah. oh, you don't like your kids. So, what do you think? Okay, so, yes. Like, you obviously love your kids, like, all the time. I think it might not be that you don't like them. It's just that you're gonna get frustrated with them a lot. And there's gonna be a lot of moments where they do things and you just kind of lose your patience. I'd wish I'd known how toxic comparing yourself to that one mom on Instagram is. I spend a lot of time on YouTube and there are tons of YouTube moms. Yeah. And I feel like that can be very intimidating seeing how they live their lives and it seems so perfect, but you always have to take a step back and be like, they're showing the highlights of their lives, you know? Yeah. They're not showing every little tantrum and mess. When you're looking at social media, it's the highlight reel. So you really can't compare yourself to anyone else because you don't really know what they're going through. Yeah, and I think I have to remember that too because eventually I want to have kids and I watch so many vloggers and sometimes I see like what's happening on YouTube and I'm like, oh, that's just what it's gonna be like when I have kids and mm -hmm. then I have to realize like, no, that's not really necessarily realistic. Um, that I would willingly put unimaginable things into my mouth. Clay will come up to me with a piece of food and he'll just want to put it in my mouth. I don't know what it was like been. from the floor. It could have been on the floor. The cat could have licked it. <laughs> like, yeah. Or like a lot of moms will put like their binkies in their mouth. Oh yeah, when he was like really young, I would always put his binky in my mouth. Not the side that he would chew on, but the outer side. Mm -hmm. I constantly had it in my mouth so that I could do like other stuff and then give it back to him. Just so that it wasn't yeah. on the floor. I wish I hadn't beaten myself up so much in the beginning about not being able to breastfeed. It's such a small part of the baby's life in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so you did breastfeed for a little bit, right? Yeah, I breastfed for like the first three months, but I had a lot of difficulty with it. The reasons that I had difficulty is because Clay was in the NICU for the first 14 days of his life and the NICU was in a different town. So it actually took us a half an hour to go from our house to the hospital that he was at. And I would have to do that every day. I couldn't stay overnight with him. I would be at home and have to pump and then bring it into the NICU every day and then we would feed him through a tube because he had a feeding tube that went into his nose and then into his stomach so then we would put the breast milk through that. Once that tube came out we did try to learn how to breastfeed together but it, it just wasn't working out. So I did continue to pump once he came home and then feed him the breast milk through a bottle, but I had then a lot of issues with supply of breast milk. So during that time period where you're having difficulty, did you ever beat yourself up about oh, not yeah. being able to breastfeed? Or did you, were you just like, oh, this is just what happens. This is what I have to do. Um, was yeah. that difficult? Yeah, I felt a lot of pressure to breastfeed because we're just told that that's the best thing that you could do. Yeah, I spent a lot of time just very upset over it and I just had to pull myself out of it and like you said, realize that I'm doing the best I can for him and in the grand scheme of things, this is a very small portion of his life. I wish someone had told me how long it might take to feel myself again. Yeah, I'd say that still I don't feel like myself even after like two years. I am a whole different person than I was before I got pregnant and before I gave birth. And I think you just kind of have to accept that you're not going to be that same person, that this is a new chapter in your life and things are going to be different and it's hard. It's hard to accept that life is different and that who you are as a person is different, but I think at the same time it can be a lot of good changes. I think that might be another thing too where people tell you that your life is going to be different, but 
Like for me, like I'm in denial. I feel like baby's gonna have to deal with like our lifestyle rather than us adjusting to theirs. And so I yeah. think like that's another thing you can't really be prepared for. It's just gonna happen and you're gonna have to go through that transition of like, oh, my life is different. You can make an effort to still do things that you used to be able to do like traveling and such. It's just gonna be harder though. That Google is evil. <laughs> the amount of sleep I lost worrying that my infant had some life-threatening rash was ridiculous. Yeah, I think the internet can be a good tool, but it can also be an evil tool at the same time. You can get in some really deep holes that are scary on the internet, but there is also a lot of good advice. It's just looking at what the source is. I do turn to Google at times, to get maybe tips or advice, but always take it with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, trust your instincts and trust your doctor. Yeah, that's one of like the reasons I really love YouTube is because mm -hmm. there's a lot of seasoned parents on there yeah. vlogging about their lives and willing to share their tips and tricks and they might not work for you necessarily, but it, they're just good to know. Yeah. And always like at least try. I wish I realized I'd never poop alone ever again. Yes, that is true <laughs> as well. Every time I go into the bathroom, Clay has to come with me, which I think when I'm starting to potty train him might actually be a good thing because, you know, he sees what, you know, we do <laughs> and then he loves to imitate. I feel like that will in the end help him with his own potty training experience. But yes, there's no privacy. That your kids will inherit the best things about you and the worst. An example of this that I can think of is when we were both kids, Allison used to give me this look <laughs> all the time that she was like annoyed and like her lip would go up. Do you remember <laughs> this? Yeah. You'd like do this look and then your lip would go up and you'd like give me the evil eyes. Yeah. Clay gives me that exact same look he? <laughs> and he started before he was even one. I think that's something that he inherited. Probably, but I mean, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> that I would question every decision I make, no matter how confident I feel at the time, there's always that moment later when I wonder if I did the right thing or if what I did will screw my kid up. That is true. In the moment, it's really hard to feel like you're making the right choice or teaching them correctly, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to like look back and be like, oh, I should have done it this way or I should have said this. Right. And you just have to remember those moments for like the next time it happens and be like, this is how I should do it next time. Right, and not beat yourself about it. You can't, either. like, yeah. you can't go back in time. I didn't realize that close friends might have very different parenting styles, which might cause tension or even um, re-evaluation of some of those friendships. Everyone has an opinion. Whether you have a kid or not. Yes, I'd say people who don't even have kids, they have an opinion and you can listen to their advice, but it doesn't mean that that's how you have to do things. Personally, yeah, I'm just polite and I'm open-minded, so I'd like to hear other people's experiences, especially being a new mom and just not knowing what to expect. In the beginning, I really did reach out to a lot of family members and be like, please, please give me advice. And they were very willing to give me advice, but at the same time, you have to draw the line somewhere because ultimately I'm the parent and I have to make the choices. Right, so this is the last one. It's, I wish I had known that I was actually gonna be good at it and that it was gonna be the greatest thing I've ever done. Looking back, I feel like I'm a better parent than I ever thought I could be. Oh. It seems so intimidating in the beginning, but it really is like just this instinct, I think, that people have inside of them. Yeah, it's and like second nature. It's like, like nature and it it will just come to you. You'll you'll know what to do. And it's just cool to like look back and just see that. Like you're kind of proud of yourself. Like, yeah, wow, I can do this. I know what I'm doing. This uh -huh. is my kid. Like, it's hard. It's but yeah, it's a good feeling to see them maybe learn something new and know that you taught them that. Like that's just amazing. Yeah, that cool. That's just like the best part. I know you're not trying to be an expert or anything, but I think this is really helpful. I'm not claiming to know a lot about parenthood or motherhood or raising a child, but these are just, I guess, my experiences. Right, yeah. And what a... I've learned in like the short amount of time that I have been a parent. No, I think that's a good thing to point out because yeah, obviously like, we're not an expert. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything. I hope you guys picked up some tips or expectations are a little bit clearer now. Do you have any tips of being a parent or things that you wish you knew before you had a kid? Let us know. I think it'll be really fun to read those. If you wanna hear um, more things about 
maybe my experience of being a mom mm -hmm. or my birthing story, let me know. Well, happy birthday, Clay. We love you so much. Yeah, happy second birthday. Aww. I'm so excited. Ah, he's cute. He's <laughs> so I know. Old. I know. He's growing up so fast. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.